Greetings Exalted One, at long last I am finally back here on YouTube, it's been over a month, um, basically if you haven't seen my last video, uh, I was, after my Monster Calls uh, review, my computer just pretty much fucking died on me, um, it was 10 years old, I got it I think in 2007, so I think it was actually legit a 10 year old computer, and it just gave up, it wanted to die, and I let it fucking die up. No, but the videos were not working. I couldn't upload videos. iMovie was just horrible, not working. I couldn't edit on iMovie. My built-in camera wasn't even working. That's why I was shooting uh, videos in my basement on my camcorder. But um, I was going to say, you know what? I'll save up money for a computer and buy it somewhere down the road. But I didn't want to leave you guys in the dark. So I said, fuck it. I'll just buy a new computer now. And here I am with my brand new iMac. This thing is beautiful. Um, very, uh, uh, very similar, but different, um, because it's, you know, a 10 year newer computer for me. Um, so yeah, the iMovie on this is a uh, very different, the interface and the look of it is very different. It looks like you can do some cool stuff with it. So I'm very excited to, uh, go into that. Um, but yeah, now that I have this new computer, I'm back, expect, uh, a lot more content. We got the Oscar coming up. We have some, uh, Good movie season coming up, you know, now that it's February is almost done, you know, January, February always have sucky movies, but March pretty much at this point now is the new summer blockbuster. That's the start of it. We have some big movies coming out in March. Um, so yeah, um, but uh, before I go into this video, here's the deal. Uh, when I was uh, messing around with the uh, iMovie, I realized um, I want to spice up this channel a little bit. I really do. And um, if anybody could help me out with that, uh, somebody who's good with editing that could help me with making a intro video or some type of uh, in, uh, intro montage, a sequence to my videos, um, you know, that's good with that with like music and like, you know, titles and uh, graphics and all that, that could create a nice little uh, intro sequence to my videos. That would be awesome. And please get in touch with me or if somebody's good with Photoshop that can create a cool uh, YouTube uh, cover art for me that as well. So yeah, um, I'm not very good at editing. I can if do stuff if I want to and I try really hard, but I figure you know what? There's people on here. I'm sure that are actually really good at this uh, and don't need to uh, lose their mind as much as I do uh, overdoing it. So uh, yeah, uh, if you can help me out with that stuff, if you have some cool ideas, Definitely get in touch with me. I'll leave my link for my uh, Facebook actually in the uh, description below. And uh, you can even message me on there with something. But uh, all that being said, here we go. This is not a review or anything. This is more of a general video. But this is uh, some movies in 2017 that I'm looking forward to. And a few that I'm not looking forward to. Um, so here we go. Let's uh, kick it off with uh, a movie that's actually coming out. Pretty soon, March 17th, I believe, and that's Disney's live action Beauty and the Beast. Uh, the original, uh, the 1991 animated Beauty and the Beast is probably my favorite Disney movie of all time, at least in my top three. So I'm very much looking forward to this. You have Emma Watson as Belle, Ewan McGregor is doing some voice. We're going to actually have a great cast in this. Um, yeah, I, as long with millions of others, I'm very much looking forward to this thing. I just... I didn't know it was going to be a musical, um, and I kind of wish it wasn't because I saw the clip of the little clip of them doing the bell song at the intro, and it's like, why do the same thing? Why do the exact same movie as the animated one? Because you're really setting yourself up for failure because you're never going to be as good as the 1991 uh, movie is if you're going to copy it, you know, scene for scene. If you're going to do a remake of something or a retelling, do something a little different. So I'm hoping. It's a little different, but I'm feeling it's more of the safe, let's make m as much money as we can by doing the same thing from the old movie. But uh, no matter what, I'm still very much looking forward to this thing coming out in less than a month, Beauty and the Beast. Next up is my second most anticipated movie of the year on this list, and that's War for the Planet of the Apes. The amazing new Planet of the Apes trilogy that uh, has been coming out. Um, I remember uh, when Rise of the Planet of the Apes came out, I was like, why? Why are they doing this movie? I mean, I really wasn't expecting anything. I didn't think it was going to be any good. I mean, why would you reboot a franchise that nobody really cares about right now? You know, nobody cared about Planet of the Apes. I mean, it's pretty much one classic movie and a bunch of mediocre sequels and the god-awful 
uh, Tim Burton Planet of the Apes, but Rise of the Planet of the Apes kind of uh, took me by surprise a lot. It was a very good movie. Uh, groundbreaking uh, 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 motion capture uh, and CGI. Now, mostly when I'm discussing movies, I talk about how bad CGI is and how it's a crutch and it's just an easy way out. But these Planet of the Apes movie prove that, movies prove that CGI is actually, can be done very well. Um, the way they uh, use the, uh, the motion capture to create the apes in these movies is just awe-inspiring. And easily the best parts of these movies are the apes themselves, Caesar and the gang. Um, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes was, even, was an even better movie than Rise of the Planet of the Apes. And now we have War for the Planet of the Apes. And when this was first being announced, I didn't even really care for it. Like, I, I mean, I said I liked, I really enjoyed the first, so I thought those were really good. Um, but for some reason, I didn't really care to uh, see the third movie or to know that it was coming out. I wasn't anticipating it all that much. But once I saw the trailer for War for the Planet of the Apes, this immediately became the second most anticipated movie of the year for me. Uh, this trailer looks phenomenal. The cinematography is gorgeous. This thing looks like it's going to be epic. It's going to be action-packed. It's going to be awesome and riveting and emotional and dramatic. Woody Harrelson looks fucking awesome as the villain. And it looks like we're going to come full circle and tie things up to the uh, original classic movie. And yeah, I just can't say enough about this. I'm so looking forward to War for the Planet of the Apes. So usually with lists like this, people are going to expect a bunch of superhero movies. But that's not quite the way it is with me. Frankly, I'm goddamn sick and tired of superhero movies at this point. Let's be, let's be honest. These movies are not even that good. They're not horrible, but they're never as good as we make them out to be or we think they're going to be. I mean, how much is uh, one different from the last? They're all the same exact movie, but one movie, uh, superhero movie that did make this list is finally Marvel's version of Spider-Man. Spider-Man Homecoming. We have Tom Holland, a kid. Yes, finally a kid playing Peter Parker, an actual high school kid playing a high school kid. How fucking amazing of a concept. No, but uh, really, it's great not to see a 30-year-old person playing a high school kid. But um, yeah, with the Sony movies, I loved the first two Tobey Maguire movies. The third one was garbage. The Andrew Garfield movies were even more garbage. Um, but uh, Tom Holland's performance as Peter Parker, even though it was very short in Captain America Civil War, was some of the best stuff in that movie. So I'm very much looking forward to this. You have uh, Marissa Tomei, the hot, the beautiful, the lovely Marissa Tomei as Aunt May. You've got uh, the legend Michael Keaton as the Vulture, Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, Iron Man is going to be in it. Um, the trailer looks good. One little uh, worrisome aspect of this is I just hope it's not too quippy and too jokey. And you know with these Marvel movies, they always tend to be that way where they these one-liners and it's like the funny the first time you watch it, then the second time it's kind of cringy and you roll your eyes. And I just hope it's not it's not two hours of that. It might be, but, you know, let's see. But the most interesting aspect of this is I want to see a John Hughes Spider-Man movie, you know? And that's what the trailer looked like. It looked like it was a Breakfast Club version of Spider-Man or one of those Brat Pack movies. And that's why I want to see a lighthearted, not very deep, not very serious, you know, day in the life of Spider-Man movie. And hopefully that's what Spider-Man Homecoming will be. Now, one movie that was teetering on being on and off this list is Alien Covenant. When this movie was first being announced, I was so fucking hyped for this movie. It would have been my second most anticipated movie of this year's list. But um, as we've seen more and more stuff with this movie, this my anticipation has dropped at an alarming rate with this movie. First up is the casting. Goddamn James Franco and Dan McBride being in this movie just pisses me off so much. And it's just, does it, it started to make me question, does Ridley Scott have Alzheimer's at this point? Really, because this makes no sense. I hate when there's these casting decisions that just distract you from the movie itself. Because let, let's be real, when we're watching this movie and we see James Franco on the screen, there's no way we're not going to be distracted. And I do not want to be distracted in that way, okay? So the casting throws me off a little bit. And then we got the trailer for it. And the trailer for this movie just... I don't... It didn't look very good. Now, the Prometheus movie was... It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't an Alien prequel. That was my main problem with it. It's, it marketed itself as being a prequel to Alien. It was going to 
tie some loose ends and, you know, uh, show us what happened before Alien. But in reality, it kind of had nothing to do with Alien. Um, so I guess, you know, it, it looks like really Scott was learning from his mistakes. So that's why he called this not Prometheus 2. He called this Alien Covenant. And that's what I was hoping for was an actual appropriate prequel to Alien. Uh, you know, answer some questions. Where did the Xenomorphs come from and all this stuff? How did they evolve? But with this trailer, all this movie looks like is a bunch of people on a spaceship running away from an alien, which kind of sounds very reminiscent of a movie I saw before. Oh yeah, the original fucking alien movie. It's the same exact looking fucking movie. Why? This is uh, Hollywood's fetish these days. Is this soft reboot shit, and I can't deal with it anymore. Every movie, it can't be a sequel or a, an actual sequel or a prequel. This is the problem. Hollywood markets it as a sequel or a prequel when in reality it's not. It's a goddamn remake of the movie and that's what this movie looks like it's going to be. It looks like it's going to be technically a prequel when in reality it's just the same exact fucking movie as the first one. And that's not what I want. It's just so cheap. And we also got like a little four minute clip of the movie itself. Not a trailer or anything but it's just the crew on the ship um, just like talking and making jokes and talking over each other and it's supposed to look very realistic and it just feels very reminiscent of the first alien but too much where it's trying too hard to evoke that same spirit and i don't know but regardless i'm still looking forward to this because i love the first two alien movies so so christopher nolan has a new movie coming out this year and uh whenever he has a movie coming out it's always on my most anticipated list christopher nolan is easily um, one of my favorite directors of the present day. Every movie he comes out with, I love. Inception is one of my favorite movies of all time. Probably, definitely one of my favorite movies of the past 20 years. Um, the Dark Knight trilogy is amazing. Um, Memento is amazing. The Prestige is amazing. Pretty much the only one I don't really care for was Interstellar. That's so-so. But here we have Dunkirk. And I don't know too much about this movie. I know it's based on true events of World War II. I think it takes place on the British side of things, but I don't really know what Dunkirk is. Was it like a battle of Dunkirk? I don't know. I don't know too much about history either. I'm fucking stupid. Um, no, but uh, yeah, if you know what Dunkirk is, please let me know. Um, but yeah, it, it's actually nice to not know too much about a movie before you see it. And then you go see it for the first time and you learn all about it there. Can you fucking imagine? No, but uh, these days we're so used to being spoon-fed the whole fucking movie in a trailer. But uh, this isn't a rant about trailers. Where am I going with this? Anyway, Dunkirk. Um, the only worrisome thing with this one is Harry Styles. The little shit from One Direction is in it. I don't know why. But um, yeah, Christopher Nolan, I have faith in you. So Dunkirk, I'm, I'm in. One movie a lot, a lot of people might not know about uh, is Murder on the Orient Express, which is a remake of a... Uh, 70s movie called Murder on the Orient Express, which is based on an Agatha Christie novel. Um, for the people who are more young and hip watching my channel, not too many old people, I'm guessing uh, Agatha Christie, if you don't know, um, wrote a bunch of uh, mystery uh, type novels and a lot of them were adapted into movies back in the old days. Um, and Murder on the Orient Express was one and it had this all-star cast with like Ingrid Bergman and Sean Connery and just uh, a, a great expansive cast the 70s movie and it was basically about all these people are on this train and um, on, while they're on the train this uh, one guy gets killed on it and there's a detective on the train and he tries to find out who was the person on the train that killed him and we see that all these people on this train actually would have a motive of killing this guy so it's kind of hard to narrow it down to who it is. But uh, we're getting a remake of it. And it's kind of a curious movie to have on my anticipated movie list. But um, yeah, it's just nice to see, um, you know, a, a movie that uh, I, I kind of forgot about. Not because it was a bad movie or anything. Because I, I really did enjoy the 70s movie. But uh, it's nice to see that it's getting remade now. You know, I was just saying, oh, Hollywood just remakes everything. But you know what? This seems like it could be an okay remake. Uh, I am looking forward to this. You know, a nice little... I think this could be a nice, neat little movie. It has an all-star cast in itself. Daisy Ridley's in it, which is uh, I'm looking forward to right there. So yeah, Murder on the Orient Express. If you haven't seen the original, go check it out. And uh, go check out the new one. Hopefully it'll be good.
Now, I don't know if this movie is cancelled or it's still happening or what the fuck is going on with this thing, but Friday the 13th, the 13th one, because it's the 13th, Friday the 13th, yeah. Anyway, um, this movie was announced, it's coming out in October, then it was, they said it was cancelled, and then they said they were still shooting, so I don't know if this is coming out, so if I'm wrong, then, you know, go crazy and tell me how fucking retarded I am. But um, as for the time being, I'll say that I'm looking forward to Friday the 13th. Now, actually, I don't even like Jason all that much. Well, I like the character Jason, but the Friday the 13th movies are all shit. But, you know, for some reason, when I was making this list, it was just like, you know what? I kind of want to see the new one. Maybe because it's the 13th one. Hey, they saved the best for 13th, right? So if it comes out, I'm looking forward to it. Another horror movie on here is Cult of Chucky. That's going to be fucking great, right? Um, I actually didn't see The Curse of Chucky yet. I've seen every Chucky movie besides the one that was um, really straight to video, uh, Curse of Chucky. I heard good things about it. Um, I'm glad it's not going with the stupid fucking comedy shit with like the seed of Chucky. That was fucking god awful. Um, w w was there one before Seed of Chucky that... Was after Bride of Chucky? I, I don't remember. Was Seed of Chucky right after Bride of Chucky? I don't remember if there's one in between there. But yeah, uh, Seed of Chucky was goddamn bad. And I didn't even really like Bride of Chucky. Um, so yeah, I know Curse of Chucky went more with the horror aspects of it. Um, but And now we're getting Cult of Chucky, which is continuing that horror uh, version of Chucky. So you know what? Let's do it. You know, I love my 80s, you know, horror icons and... Chucky is one of them, so you know what? Bring on the cult of Chucky. Another movie that I've not seen, uh, the previous one, but I'm looking forward to now, is Blade Runner 2049. Now, I know it's shocking. I'm a movie file, a cinephile. I love movies. I adore movies, right? But I have not seen Blade Runner. Fucking tragedy, travesty, you know, sacrilege. I know, it's horrible. I really have to get around to watching Blade Runner. I think the problem with watching Blade Runner, it just seems like such a task for me because there's three cuts of it. You have the theatrical cut, you have the director's cut, and you have the final cut. And I just don't know which fucking one to watch. That's probably why I've been putting it off for so long because there's three cuts of it and I just don't know which one to go for. So if you guys love Blade Runner and you have some advice, please comment and let me know which version of Blade Runner do I watch first. But uh, that being said, I love Harrison Ford now. Anybody who knows me knows I have a huge fucking man crush on Harrison Ford, and I don't care. Um, so anything that's going to have Harrison Ford in it, I am all in for. And Blade Runner 2049, the sequel to Blade Runner, is going to have Harrison Ford in it. Again, um, furthering his character. Deckard, I think his character's name is. Um, and it's also going to have Ryan Gosling in it, who I also enjoy. Um, but the biggest... Um, intriguing and interesting aspect of this is that Denis Villeneuve, 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 Denis Villeneuve, the guy who directed Arrival is directing Blade Runner 2049. Um, and Arrival was just fucking amazing. I kind of wish I, 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 maybe I'll do like a late review on it since it's being nominated for the Oscars. I don't know, maybe that's coming, but Arrival was fucking awesome. And, um, I'm very interested in this guy's work now. And for him to be uh, directing the Blade Runner movie, I'm like, hell yeah, I want to see it. And, you know, I love science fiction. I really do. And I'm just kind of thinking, it's a shame that science fiction movies have just kind of died. Like, there's not any more really good, like, groundbreaking, just, like, uh, intellectual that kind of challenge your your mind science fiction type movies and those were so prevalent in the 60s and 70s and 80s and it's just a shame that those died out so i think that's one of the main reasons why i'm really looking forward to blade runner 2049 so uh yeah gotta watch blade runner though first any time pixar is releasing a movie i'm gonna be anticipating it and this year we've got coco coming out don't know too much about this one um i do know it's about this kid who, um, he comes from a family that pretty much banned music um, from their lives, kind of like uh, Footloose, I guess. Um, but this kid loves music and something happens where he enters the uh, the, uh, the land of the dead, the, with the whole Dave the Dead concept. 
and he meets this uh his idol who is this deceased singer and they go on this journey and stuff um don't know too much about it, it looks pretty cool it's different that's what i like about pixar i like because what was great about pixar was they did original movies all the fucking time now that they made this deal with Disney, it's they're releasing sequels non-fucking-stop, and it's like, just, god damn it, do original movies. Like, when you did Wally and Up, and, you know, the first Toy Story, and Monsters, Inc., I like originality, not, you don't need to do sequels all the time, so, very much looking to the original Coco. And here we go, the main event. I bet you guys could not see this coming. My most anticipated movie of 2017 is... Drum roll, Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. I know, you didn't, had no fucking clue. I know, but uh, yeah, it kind of snuck at that number one spot. It was kind of, uh, do I really care for it that much? But yeah, I got Star Wars, The Last Jedi as my number one most anticipated movie of the year. Um, I mean, really, what's there to say about this at this point? I mean, nothing. Um, just uh, jerk off to this. That's what I want to do, I guess. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Star Wars The Last Jedi is coming out December 17th, 16th, 18th, 15th. I think it's December 15th, actually. Um, well, the Thursday, right? I don't know. I don't know. December something it's coming out. Around Christmas time. Um, but yeah, Star Wars The Last Jedi, episode 8. And this is going to be a weird one without Carrie Fisher, man. She's going to be in it, of course. She shot all her scenes, but I've heard that they're doing reshoots and they're going to try to work around her. I just hope they don't cut out all of her material because it would just be really nice to see Carrie Fisher one last time. But it is going to be kind of eerie. But pretty much, you know, this channel will go heavily into this movie as we get closer to it. So I'm not going to do a long discussion of it here. Basically, what I want from this movie, I love The Force Awakens. Okay, I don't care what anybody fucking does. I love The Force Awakens. And I understand that it was kind of a soft reboot. I understand that it had a lot in common with A New Hope. And I was fine with it. Because we had to be reintroduced to how good Star Wars was before the prequels. But we're done with that now. With The Last Jedi, we need something a little different. Now, I'm not saying it has to be totally experimental and totally like different from every other Star Wars movie. Because let's face it. Star Wars was never that original, okay? Star Wars, A New Hope itself was based on Flash Gordon serials and based on, you know, Seven Samurai and, you know, uh, Joseph Campbell's A Hero's Journey. You know, it wasn't this original crazy thing that people make it out to be. Uh, the Empire Strikes Back was the only truly innovative and original Star Wars movie because after that, Return of the Jedi um, relied a lot on the two previous movies. Phantom Menace relied a lot on the original trilogy, and so did Episode 2 and Episode 3. So people make it out to be whenever a Star Wars movie comes out that's not totally original. It's this travesty when it's not. But with The Last Jedi, we can't have an, a whole 100% rehash. There needs to be some new stuff. So that's all I'm hoping for with The Last Jedi. But um, yeah, me, as with so many other people... The number one most anticipated movie of the year is Star Wars, The Last Jedi. And just for good measure, I, I'm going to throw in some movies I'm not looking forward to this year. Um, really quickly, this isn't going to be a big part of the segment. Um, one that's coming out really soon, in a couple weeks actually, Kong Skull Island. I was actually looking forward to this originally. Um, I love King Kong and Godzilla, and I, like, I really love the idea that here we're going to do another King Kong and Godzilla movie. The original one is just so good and so bad at the same time. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I like this whole, you know, shared universe type shit that Marvel created. Now everybody has to do it, a cinematic universe. But I liked it with the monsters. It sounded pretty cool. Um, but once we saw the trailer for this, this movie looks really bad, man. I, lo I love Brie Larson and Tom Hiddleston and Samuel L. Jackson, but this movie just looks like trash. You have John C. Riley in an awkward role in this movie because this movie seems like it shouldn't be like this comedy like quippy movie but it looks like it's going to be um and it just looks like it's gonna be two and a half hours of special effects so shoot me in the head um also justice league that's another one i'm really not looking forward to um batman v superman sucked ass man of steel sucked cock um suicide squad i didn't see but i'm sure it sucked balls 
so what other body part will Justice League suck? No. Um, Power Rangers. Oh, Jesus Christ. And I was never a fanboy of Power Rangers. So, you know, I can't, you know, speak from that perspective. But when I saw the trailer for this movie, man, I think I was watching a Monster Calls or a La La Land. But the trailer for this came on. And I was like, what is this shit? Because I, I didn't know it was Power Rangers, all right? With the trailer, the first trailer that came out, it looked like it was like one of those like MTV, high school Twilight looking movies. Nothing about this mo trailer said Power Rangers at all, except for the very fucking end. Everything was just so fucking self-serious. And, you know, the thing about the Power Rangers, I liked the Power Rangers as a kid. I wasn't a fanboy. But it was just so goddamn campy and corny. And that was kind of the charm of it. This movie looks like it's trying to be so goddamn self-serious and it's making me fucking throw up in my mouth. It looks so just amazingly bad. Um, speaking of amazingly bad, the new version of The Mummy with Tom Cruise. Look, I don't care if anybody says I love Tom Cruise. I have a man crush on Tom Cruise. Fucking sue me. But uh, this movie looks fucking trash. This is another cinematic universe and this was one I was looking forward to originally. The uh, Universal Monsters Cinematic Universe because I love the original one because before there was Marvel okay little boys and girls before there was a Marvel Universal did the real first cinematic universe in the 30s and 40s you had Frankenstein meets the Wolfman and House of Dracula and all the House of Frankenstein all these movies with all the monsters that had an actual shared cinematic universe so like oh that's cool they're gonna bring that back with the mummy and Frankenstein's monster, and the Invisible Man, and Dr. Jekyll, but, uh, yeesh, this trailer was horrible, uh, where do you start with, um, the, the, the Mission Impossible looking sequence, this whole movie looks like it's Mission Impossible, it's, uh, Tom Cruise stunts, that's all it is, when I was kind of expecting a, uh, not horror movie, but more of a monster movie, and the, the, the mummy, doesn't even look like a mummy. It's some chick that looks like the uh, the the uh, Asian villain, the villain chick in Suicide Squad. It looks like the same character. Yeah, this looks pretty goddamn bad. Um, now remember when I said with Coco, whenever there's a Pixar movie that's coming out, I'm looking forward to it. This is the exception. Cars three. I fucking hate the Cars franchise. I've never seen one of them, but I hate them. Okay, because I'm judgmental and I just judge things without knowing what I'm talking about, but I hate fucking cars. So fuck Cars 3. And last, for movies I'm not looking forward to, is Jumanji. With The Rock and uh, Kevin Hart and Jack Black. You know, this is just why. And it kind of, Robin Williams is probably spinning in his grave. Turning over in his grave. Um, Jumanji, the original, was not any kind of like amazing classic or just amazing at all. It was a good movie. It's a fun movie, but it was just a little movie that was enjoyable. That was mostly made enjoyable because of Robin Williams' performance. Why are we remaking this or rebooting it or sequeling it? I'm not even sure what this technically is. But um, case in point, Hollywood um, needs some ideas and they need some ideas fucking bad. When you're remaking Jumanji, you know Hollywood is fucked out of ideas. So there you go. There's my anticipated movies and my not-so-anticipated movies. Let me know what some of yours are. Um, I am back on YouTube, so expect more content, some more video reviews, movie reviews. Uh, we have the Oscar coming out. Maybe I'll do an Oscars recap video. I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's going to be fun. Stick around. Um, but And also, like I said in the beginning of the video, if anybody knows how to you know create an intro sequence to my videos for me or create... Some YouTube cover art, definitely get in touch. Add me on Facebook and message me there. Um, there you go. As always, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for sticking around, and I will see you for the next review.